Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I'm going into the Wayback Machine. This is an Ocean City reel. It's the Ocean City 81. It was made in the uh, 40s and 50s, and interestingly enough, one of the catalogs that I was looking for, or through, as I was um, doing a little bit of research on the history of the Ocean City Fishing Reel Company, showed that this reel was selling for 61 cents. Well, that's probably uh, an indication of how economics have changed over the time. It's probably also an indication of uh, why these things don't come in for service, but that's okay. Uh, I get them one way or another, and this one I think I got as a result of uh, somebody cleaning out uh, their sheds or whatever, and then had a yard sale, and just this was attached to an old pole at a very inexpensive rate. Uh, so we're going to service it. It's moving, and that's one of the things you want to check for if you're buying a used reel. Make sure all the pieces and parts are there on the reel. A lot of these times you'll find that the pole assembly is missing. Uh, you're out of luck if uh, that's the case because you're not going to find any replacement parts for a reel like this other than as a donor reel. Somebody also asked me a question not too long ago about um, doing some prep before you, um, you, you service a reel. It was basically why don't you hose a reel down or the like and generally uh, you can work around that and you can clean it up during it. But this reel is being very tight. It's an old reel. So I'm actually going to hose it down with some penetrating oil. I'm just going to get it all over the, the reel. Get it in the handlebars. Those things crack all the time. Get it around the screws. Because if you break these screws or if you uh, damage any of these parts, again, uh, the, the reel is lost. Okay, so we're going to just uh, start by thanking our first responders and essential personnel and everybody who's involved in keeping us safe during the pandemic. I would be remiss if I uh, didn't thank our hometown heroes for all that it is that they're doing. We're going to uh, grab a wrench now and see if we can't get the handle screw off, and we can't because it's the, uh, the smaller one that I have a wrench for. So right now I'm just going to see if we can't start with pliers. And I don't generally like to use pliers on any of this stuff, and I don't recommend it. If you do use it padded, it would be very sensitive to the fact that it can scar the, uh, the, the nuts and that and uh, the like. This is what usually happens with these handles. They become very tight, kind of hard to turn. Both of these are, are tight to some regard. And this is actually where penetrating oil will help you. It will loosen up some of the dirt and get the real uh, handle working a little bit better. Sometimes it's just going to be swollen on the, uh, on the posts and, and you can't do anything about it. We're just going to flood that with the penetrating oil, let it sit up by its side and take care of itself. Next up then we're going to remove the gear side plate. And one of the things about these reels was the simplicity. Uh, yes, it is at a level one reel, so it's got a couple extra moving parts in it. But the general design on these older reels was very simple, only a few moving parts, very functional, and uh, the pricing differentials on this reel at 61 cents and maybe the higher end at a dollar and a quarter at the, at the time, it's just materials. This has got a Bakelite or a plastic exterior, the other ones might have metal. And uh, other than that, there's not much uh, that was different in the design or the manufacturing of these reels. Worm gear drive and assembly. If you pull this off like that, the whole thing is going to come out. Spool. And on the back side, interestingly enough, it looks like this reel was never used with a clicker because that clicker's got a nice sharp point to it. And I'm sure that that would make a lot of noise if we wanted to add the noisemaker today. There is some debris back there, so again, let's just flush and clean that out. I'm using a cotton swab to reach the hard parts of this piece. There is some rust on this. That would be another reason why the reel would be less. You wouldn't use a, a stainless or another fancy metal. You would just use a, a, a steel. Um, and uh, that probably has a little plating on there, but not much. And that's, uh, that's the cause of this reel's um, rusting. So just take care of it. There's not much you can do about it. You can clean it up. And that penetrating oil will actually act as a degreaser and get a lot of the crud off the side of the reel as well. If you needed more, we'll use a, a rod and reel cleaner, but for now this one is in, in pretty good condition. There's just a little uh, recess here. That recess is going to get some grease in it to help the spool travel a little bit better. 
the uh, grease that I'm using for that is a pen precision real grease and uh, somebody's probably rolling over in their graves since pen was formed by an employee who uh, who left Ocean City to, to form the pen uh, fishing reel company. We'll just make sure the same thing here that the back of the spool gets cleaned and this has a really old line on it probably from the 60s who knows when this reel was last fished. Uh, I'll take that off but I'm not going to take it off right now. I recommend that you always change your line when you're uh, servicing a reel. Monofilament's cheap, get rid of it. It, uh, it tends to stretch, it tends to have um, uh, ultraviolet damage which weakens it. You just uh, don't need to lose the big fish because of it. This is a pin that doesn't hold the, uh, any um, screws in it. It sits in a cavity on this side of the reel. And I recommend that you take pictures before you start uh, any of the service aspects of a reel, particularly if, the, if you don't know the reel or if you can't find a schematic on the reel. That picture will help you identify where the pieces and parts came from and it will help you get the reel back together again if you get stuck. So I just cleaned up that shield for the line guide. And again, I guess it's 61 cents. It was a value at the time, but you can see in this case, we have a, I'm going to pull out a little. We have a carrier here that wasn't very well plated. I'll just use some uh, elbow grease and a four row piece of steel. We'll do the best that we can there. And then here's your line guides um, piece. You want to take that screw off if you can get it off. If you can't, don't force it because if you can't get it off and you try to break a screw off, well, you're gone. There are no replacement parts for a reel like this. So we'll just pull that up. There's a little pawl here. That's what's working underneath that uh, shield. That screw is actually holding the pawl in there. And we're just going to use some fishing reel oil on that. To make sure that it turns, uh, turns easy enough. And then we'll put some into the groove as well. And then we're just going to go put that screw right back on. That's why it's not in my parts tray. It's sitting over on the side. Most of the time on complicated reels I'll use a parts tray. In this case I'm just kind of working serially. And I have all of the stuff nearby. Look at how smooth that turns. So it doesn't matter what the pricing on a reel like that is. It's all about the manufacturing and design of the reel. Put a little bit of grease onto the stud. That stud is going to go into the case right here. And you're going to make certain that the tag end of the line guide goes into the slot. We saw this before. This sits over the top of the post. The big hole is for where the warm gear, warm drive gear is going to go. This sits, and that's loose now because we want to put the line guide shield in. There's two sides. There's a short side and a long side. The long side goes to the back. Again, if you're not familiar with the, uh, the reel, make sure that you note these things as you uh, disassemble the reel because your, your reel won't function properly if you uh, install this line guide backwards. So I think... Uh, First thing we can do is probably get this in. Sometimes you need a couple of hands to get it done properly. But that's the way the line guide is going to go. Trying holding all of these pieces and doing this is not an easy task. But eventually, with a little patience, you can get it. There we go. So this is how the assembly goes there. Then you have the warm drive gear. And the main gear has got two uh, gears on it. We'll show you in a moment. The outer gear is what's going to drive this warm gear. So I'm going to set this down gingerly because I don't want uh, all those pieces of parts to break. And we'll come over to the main gear side. Now I'll just make sure that this gets its service. So isn't that interesting? I was thinking 
like some of the other reels that we're going to have a two gear system the spacing on this is just right it's going to turn both of the gears it's going to turn your spool and it's going to turn your worm worm gear uh, all in the same that's nice I, uh, I was expecting an inner gear and an outer gear there which some of these bait feeders have so always learning something well there's nothing really to do on that that main gear this is what's called a knuckle buster reel it doesn't have a drag system in it it doesn't have an anti-reverse so all you want to do is make sure that this gear gets cleaned and that the old greases come off of that that's what we're doing right now you would check the gear teeth to make sure that they're all symmetrical they are put a little bit of grease onto the teeth put the grease onto the shaft shaft inside the drive that goes in a whole lot easier than it came out so that's kind of telling me and here you can see the spool is going to nest in this little cavity here this is the nesting for the worm gear and uh, that main gear is going to drive both very interesting all right I'm going to get grease into both of those cavities so that it makes those turn a little bit easier and we can go reassemble I'm going to try and do this with it laying down so it's going to be a little bit hard maybe for you to see just trying to, to seat it properly I have a little bit of a swing issue over here with this there we go now we got it you heard that nice little snap go there and uh, looks like I'm just missing this hole here with the line guide so you want to check everything before you start putting the screws back in we're in the holes for the line guide on this side and I think the only thing that's missing now is the rotation for the there we go. I think we got it now I just heard that secondary snap all right let's go grab those three screws put those in Top one goes in the first cross post. These are always kind of fun to work on. They're rather simple reels, but I've gained quite an appreciation for simplicity in working on these reels. You don't need to over-engineer reels. You don't need to overthink design. Uh, fewer moving parts is better. And in this case, for 61 cents back in the, the day, this is probably a nice value wheel for the money paid uh, there you go that's the, that's the snap I was waiting to hear all right so we're all lined up the wheel is nice and tight we've cleaned up as much as we can there's a little bit of surface rust on there that's uh, just going to be I know there's folks out there that take great pride in their reels and they want to paint them and do all kinds of things and I don't discourage that it's just, I just don't do that well we got handles that are moving with that uh, WD-40 is it moving well yeah, it could be moving smoother but uh, the penetrating oil has done what it can do now it's time to put the nut cap back on for the handle give this little guy a, a test drive here now I'm only going to hand tighten. I'm going to go back and find it. It's probably a six, six millimeter wrench. Look at this. What, what can I say? What can I say? It's just beauty and simplicity. That handle knob is turning right now. This one's turning a little bit more difficult, but uh, I think the WD-40 will work its way in time. Really smooth, nice action. You know what? We can put this on a pole. We can go fishing tomorrow, and uh, the fish will fear the reel. So this is a knuckle buster because when you cast it, this is going backwards and if you cast the reel using a, a, a thumbed approach and you get your hand too close to the side, it is definitely going to whack you in the hand. So that's why it's called a knuckle buster because there is no anti-reverse and on casting it does free spool to let that line out. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. If you have a reel that you want service to repair, please contact me on the information on the business card that follows. And again, I encourage you to subscribe to see more. And if you do subscribe, please hit that notification button. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle wishing you all well. Please stay safe and stay watching, stay fishing, 
and uh, stay healthy. Have a great day.